Thank you, Representative Walker. Thank you. I'm glad to follow my passionate colleague in this, um, Representative Blaine. Glad for her leadership. Uh, Chair Timothy, Chair Gonzalez, you know about this issue, both of you having led on it. Uh, so we're grateful for your um, forbearance here as we talk about this particular bill, one of many before you for your consideration. Uh, before I start, I also want to associate myself in support of the hoisting bill. I have uh, educators here from Franklin Tech and from Smith Vocational, uh, and they are here to plea with you. I heard the beautiful um, conversation with the committee at the beginning of this hearing, and I appreciate that the committee sees the real necessity to end this catch-22 for our educators and students. So thank you so much. I also want to associate myself in support of the PFAS legislation with which you're grappling. So now on uh, to S1489 and H3821, an act creating a municipal and public safety building authority. Uh, so as Rep. Lay said, cities and towns throughout our district, our shared district and the state do not have the tax base or borrowing ability to build new or upgrade, simply upgrade, uh, the public safety and municipal buildings um, and the impact of this inability is both wrenching, it's dangerous, and it's really untenable. In the binders before you, you'll hear stories of mold, significant mold causing illness. You'll hear stories of concrete falling from the ceiling. Um, you'll certainly hear from Royalston, Ashfield and Bernardston, a, a gentleman on uh, one of our constituents online about the, the real hardship in those communities. So this bill uh, creates an independent public authority, like similar bills before you, um, and similar to other public authorities, like, of course, uh, the MSBA, the MBLC. Uh, we call this the municipal school, uh, the, the municipal building authority. Um, and as Rep. Blay said, it would provide matching funds to cash-strapped towns. So. Our idea with this bill is to create a dedicated fund that would receive a third of the revenue collected from the marijuana excise tax, which currently collects an estimated $176 million. So we know that the legislature struggles to find a, a dedicated revenue source for us. The fact that a number of these buildings would be public safety. Um, there is a tie for us, um, for our firefighters, for our uh, police officers to take part of this revenue as a pay for. The funds, of course, then could be used to assist municipalities with the construction or improvements to municipal or public safety buildings, including police stations, fire stations, EMS facilities, city or town offices, and Department of Public Works facilities. The legislation sets up a process for the state to establish criteria, um, as I know you, you understand well, have independent experts evaluate proposed renovations or new buildings, and recommend funding based on available resources. The bill also sets up an advisory board, which we think is critical to provide feedback and support from a variety of viewpoints, especially because municipalities have complex systems. Uh, so Replay has already shared some examples, um, and we have both submitted detailed written testimony and, and as well as the uh, binders. I wanna close by saying I'm particularly grateful to the Mass Municipal Association, which is here in force today with a panel of mayors. They have made this bill a priority um, because I think they they share the belief that we share that this bill can catalyze both local and state investments to keep our communities strong and safe. Um, and as you know better than I, last last session, you this committee reported this bill favorably, for which we were very a version of this bill favorably for which we were very, very grateful and we're hoping very much for your strong consideration and another committee bill um, so that we can move this forward at this critical time for our municipalities. Thank you very much, Senator. We're grateful for your consideration.